Let's take a look at our first complete C program since we wrote Hello World. This program just also demonstrates printing to the screen since it's such a useful functionality to have. I've listed the program here in my terminal window. Uh, you can see the first line here, pound include standard io.h. What that's saying is that this program is going to use printing, uh, a printing function to the screen. And so it's telling our compiler that give me access to the library that allows me to print things to the screen. This doesn't come in the basic vanilla C implementation. It's an added library to allow you to print out depending on the type of screen that you have. So that's the first line. It's going to tell us that we can print. The second line is our main function. Every program has exactly one main function, and that's where the program begins executing. Every function, just like a variable, has a data type associated with it. And you can see here that the data type of main is int, integer. And what that means is it's going to return an integer when it finishes executing. And so actually, if you go down here to the bottom, you can see that it returns the value of 0. The reason that main returns a value at all is it's indicating to you whether it completed successfully or not. And 0 indicates that it completed successfully. So our, our function has the data type int. Every function can also take arguments, inputs to that function. In this case, main is not going to take any inputs, so we're going to write void there. Void is another data type, just like int and char are data types. Void means that we're not taking anything as arguments to this, to this function. OK, so now after we have that, we've got an open brace here and a closed brace down here. And what that means is that the function is contained between those two braces. The first thing we do inside the function is we define four variables, the integer i, the float f, the double d, and the char c. And then after that, in this line, we assign values to them. So i is given a value of 32. Both f and d are given values of 4.278. And c is given the value of k. Now, here we put the k in the single quotes. And what that means is it's going to take the character k and actually convert it to a numerical value. So this is actually equivalent to saying c is equal to 107. If we looked at the ASCII table, we would see that the numerical value for k is 107. So we've assigned values to our four variables. And now we've got this printf command here. Printf is the way that we print to the screen or the standard output. And we print everything that comes inside the double quotes. Okay? So here we're going to print out formatted output. And then we have this slash n character. That's a special character. When you see the slash, it means what's coming after it is a special character. And here, that's interpreted to be new line. So slash n means new line. So the first thing we do is we print out formatted output, and then we do a carriage return. And now we're going to print values of i, c, f, and d. And this percent is another special character here. So where you see percent 4d, that means it's going to print out an integer with four spaces. Okay. And the thing that every percent sign here has associated with it a variable later on. So after the comma here, we have i. So the first percent sign 4d goes with this i. So we're going to say i is equal to this value gets printed out. And then c is equal to this value of c. Percent d means we're going to print it as an integer. Percent c means that we're going to print it as a character. And these f's here mean that we're going to print them as floating point numbers. So just like you see here, that it's going to be allocate four spaces to print this integer. Down here, when we print this floating point number, we're going to use 19 spaces. And 17 of them are going to come after the decimal point. Okay. And the same thing for d, except we use lf instead of f. Uh, because it's a long float or a double. This is just uh, historically the, the notation. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the directory here. So, so far, all we have is printout.c in our directory. So we're going to compile that and send it to an output executable called printout. Okay, if we look at our directory again, we see we have two files now, the executable and the original source code. And now, just so we have it on the screen, I'm going to 
list the program one more time, and now I'll run it. Okay, and this is the output. You see that i is equal to 32, just as we would expect. C is equal to k, just as we would expect. Now we see that f is equal to 4.277999, etc. And d is equal to 4.277999999, etc. Neither one of them are equal to 4.278, as we requested. And that's because the floating point representations in floats and doubles cannot represent every value exactly. There's a limited number of bits to represent. So some values are approximated. But what you'll also see is that the double came closer to approximating 4.278 than the single precision float did because, again, it has greater resolution. 